Okay, Mr. Chair, let me introduce. Thank you. Uh, would everybody please stand and follow me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the uh, October 26th meeting of Patrick of George Planning Board and the Architectural Advisory Committee. A little uh, housekeeping before we get underway that uh, if the fire alarm goes off in the building, it'll cause a, a loud ringing of bells and there's a strobe light that goes off over there. Please exit the building. Uh, through either the doors and go either to the left or right, whichever way you can most expeditiously and safely get out of the building. I ask you to walk, don't run. When you get outside, please stay to the sidewalk. Uh, please do not get in your car, do not attempt to drive away because you'll impede oncoming emergency vehicles. When the meeting's over, we'll come back out when the uh, emergency is over uh, and the building has been recertified for re-entry, we'll come back in and finish our meeting. So tonight we have four items on the agenda, and uh, first application is Metro House Constructors uh, LLC 507 West Main Street City Commission to construct new two-story addition to existing single floor building, adding a total of seven new apartments, seven premises located in the uh, RH zone. Good evening, sir. Please state name and address for the record. Okay. And uh, tell us about the project. Um, hi, uh, thanks for thanks for having me here. My name is Rob Muchnick. I'm one of the owners of uh, Northwood Village Apartments. My uh, dad built uh, Northwood Village in 1978. Um, basically, his friend Jerry Sadowski lived around the corner. His lifelong friend. If any of you guys remember him, yes, we will never forget. Okay, well, I've known Jerry since I was uh, about this big, and uh, my dad and he went to high school together and college. And Jerry said, "I know this great piece of property that you have to, to build," and, and so my dad did. And since then, it's been a, a senior citizens section eight complex um, where we take care of basically the most uh, vulnerable. Uh, citizens of the area, um, basically the, the people pay approximately three, three hundred and fifty dollars on average a month. The federal government pays the rest. Um, we're very proud that we have never evicted anyone in 43 years. Um, that's why probably a lot of people don't know us down in the in the village because a you can't see us from the street, and b we're never down here throwing anyone out. And I would imagine you don't get too many complaints about us. And full disclosure, in 1998, Kevin and I played on the same softball team and we won the championship <laughs> at uh, Shorefront, Shorefront Park. So, um, and you say it's almost the old adage, you don't really want to know the home plate umpire's name and so no one really knows what you guys are doing down there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, now I want to know about 1998 Kevin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, his hair was browner. <laughs> but he looked about the same. But, the hair was browner. but uh, so basically, um, uh, right, we've also had our office on site um, for about the last 30 years. And something's been annoying. So basically, Northwood Village is 64 apartments in eight buildings. So eight buildings of eight units. So all of the buildings are two stories, except for the clubhouse where our office is, is one story. And right next to the clubhouse, there's, for some reason, my dad built shuffleboard courts, which have never been used in 43 years. And I said to myself, okay, we can use this. We can do something here. So I decided, I think the, the, the right idea is to build, is to build, put a second floor onto the clubhouse building and a very small uh, addition next to it. So we're adding about 900 and something feet on the first floor, um, and then about 4,400 feet upstairs. So we're not adding much to the footprint. We're going from about 16 units per acre to 18, approximately. Um, that's what we'd like to do. So 
this is this is what we look like right now. This is what we look like. We just did a, in the last, in the last, uh, um, this, this was done this year, actually. We redid seven of the buildings. We didn't redo the clubhouse because we, we had the idea already to, uh, to, um, to do this. So I figured we're not gonna redo it if we're gonna redo it again in a few months. And we didn't redo building number eight because that had a fire about seven, eight years ago and we redid it then. So, and it's still in perfectly good shape. So as you can tell, we use the, we use the vinyl shingles, we use vinyl board and batten, we use horizontal vinyl, we, um, we use very fancy craftsman style columns. Um, and this doesn't get us, uh, just so you know, this doesn't get us any extra rent with, with the government. It's not like we did we spent money to get rent. We just did it because we, we had to do it. We felt like it was time after 40 odd years, the siding just had to be done. So, and we want to do the same kind of style on the current uh, pro uh, proposal. But then, So we're looking to add seven units, six of them, one bedrooms, one studio. Uh, I was in touch with Carol and Pete and they suggested 11 parking spaces. I found spots to put 11 new parking spaces on site. Um, so then I took it upon myself to go count how many spaces are really needed. So I went, uh, I don't know if you have this letter that I, yeah. okay. So I went out every day personally about seven times over the course of a week in April. And I counted how many spaces were open at all different times during the, in the morning in the afternoon and in the middle of the night too. Um, and the lowest amount, so we have 61 spaces for our 64 units. And the lowest amount of open spaces we had was 27. So our, the most spaces that our tenants use is 0.56 spaces per unit. Now, obviously, these have people have they don't have a lot of disposable income, um, so that's why they don't have cars. And also, the, the, so yeah. so you know, so we have at least 27 open spaces, and so I was hoping to if you if you give me my uh, if you so kind to let me build my seven units, I would really like to ask you a favor and say, and let me land bank my 11 spaces. And so if you ever, if there's ever a problem, and which there's not, because I'm there every every single day. And if there was a parking problem, I would certainly put in the spaces. Um, but if for some reason there's a problem, we'll build them later. I have no problem with that. I would love that accommodation. Um, where would you land back to? I'm looking at the site. Okay. Where would they go? <laughs> okay. So nine of them would go all the way on okay. all the way on the north side. Yeah, the screen space. And two of them would go right in front of the addition. Okay. So I would love to keep as much green space as possible. Yeah. We we actually prefer that. Yeah. So, and you know, obviously developers want to land bank things, but in this case, we have no problems, and I'm there. So why would I invite my uh, problem for myself? Well, the problem is, is we can't give you relief for parking spaces. We don't want to use the We want to send it to CBA because then it's not utilized, and if it's land yeah. bank, we land bank, bank then we can, yeah, we don't. That was. Right. 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 And the other thing is it's not a new complex. So the, the track record based on right. experience and this research being done. So I personally don't object to it. Like, no, so much no, no, no. Thank you very much. And then I guess you probably would have seen me here years ago, but it took me Thanks. it took me years to figure out what to do with the sanitary flow. And because I thought they were going to make me connect to to the village, which would have made this whole project, uh, because I'm, I'm an out of, I'd be an out of network uh, 
connection, it would have made the whole project non-viable economically. But after doing a lot of research and sitting down with the health department, um, basically they did all of their um, changes in 1981. So basically before 1981, they didn't differentiate between senior apartments and open age apartments. So because of that, in theory, I could, if I, I could double the amount of units I have. Obviously I can't because they can't fit on the site. You can only fit these seven. There's nothing, there's nowhere else to jam anything. But the health department is allowing it by just having me change some of the cesspools to the new um, IA system. And uh, I, I already have the covenants that I'm supposed to file with them. So if you wanted to see them, or not. Oh, and, and I think I'm supposed to give you yeah. any approval you would get Carol? would be subject to yeah, the health so. Yeah. So. Right, of so course. Any, any approval here would be subject to the health department. Correct, but you wouldn't, you, I wouldn't want to waste your time if I wasn't going to get it. No, I'm not. So that's why, that's why I wasn't here. And then further, I was in touch with Marion Russo. And we came up with an agreement that my seven units I'm going to basically give to her because she says she's got plenty of people to fill them with, to go with more seniors, um, se more senior section eight. So she said she'd love, and she's, I don't know if you got the letter. Yes, we did. Okay, October 22nd, I will read that into the record. So, um, so basically, right, so also, so, so since the new people are also gonna be senior section eight, they're gonna have very few cars too. So with seven, seven spaces, we probably need three, seven units, we probably only need three to say four spaces to cover those, uh, to cover them. And we have 27 free. So it's not, it's not a problem. Um, so in conclusion, I, this would, we think this would be, obviously we want this, so this is good for us. We think this is very good for the town and we're happy to help uh, create more house, more good housing for uh, uh, people who need it. So, Kevin, any questions? Are you required to, um, with new construction, to have an elevator going to that second floor? No, no. Yeah, and the federal government doesn't require that for second floor? So the section with maybe with public senior, maybe with public housing, but not not privately privately owned section eight. Yeah. Maybe with public housing. So that's that's also a, a thing that Mary and I are trying to work out because this is not public housing, but HUD is a little bit funny. And they have some rules we're trying to get, we're trying to make our agreement now. But we might have to wait till I build it and then make the agreement because to get around some of these funny and HUD rules. So, but uh, I have every intention of, of working with Marion. Would you have to put have a <coughs> ADA compliant on the first floor? <coughs> <coughs> you do it every day because county on the first right, floor, yeah, sure. Right, right, yeah, so, so not the second floor. Right. Yeah, yeah the yeah, first floor. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're only adding one unit on the first floor. Right. Yeah. And that unit will be ADA. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and the doors to the apartments on the second story will be in toward the rear of, of that building or? No, so we're, we're going to have- Because you've got the community center down below, right? Right, so basically, basically. So there's no second floor here right now. So this is the door to my office. Uh, this is the this is the current door to the community center, and we're going to add in this door. We're going to take about three feet out of the community room and we'll put a staircase to the second floor. So it's going to be a common hallway, right, a little hallway upstairs. Is there any uh, any other exit or emergency exit at least or, uh, on that second floor? No. Okay. No. Just the window. What's the width of the stairway? That'd be at least ten feet. Whatever, whatever code requires. I don't, I don't need to do any structure down it or whatever. Yeah, we do it all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm using um, Gary Canella Architects. I mean, they know what, to, they know what to do. Yeah. 
We've been it's, using not, it's not ABA, obviously. It's no, not. the second floor. Is, no. Was so, so Gary the original architect? Gary was not the original architect. We started using him in the early 80s. <laughs> you know, back then when my dad built this, I was in sixth grade. So <laughs> I had no, no say over who the architect was. But we've been using Gary for, since at least 81, 82. Okay. So they're different. There's one unit that seems to be a little bit different than the others. Is that right? Is there a studio unit? I think they're all a little different. Well, I mean, but it, that it's not a, it doesn't look like it's a separate bedroom. Is yeah, right? one is a studio. One is a studio. Yes, okay. one is a studio and six or one bedrooms. Okay. They range between seven and eight hundred square feet, correct? Yeah, it's about the average. The studio is smaller. Mm -hmm. And, and, right. So, I mean, we have a, we have a waiting list of, I don't know, about like five to ten years probably for people to get in. So, so I mean, there's there's a desperate need for for these kinds of units. Yeah, I I do I just for the record I do appreciate um the affordability of the units because we want we want seniors to age in place and a lot of them are just relocating from their homes to you know something smaller. Right. Um, that they can afford and they can stay within their own community. And and it works well because the the village sends a bus through. Yeah. through our place every day and picks up people. And then there's the public transportation bus literally right on Montauk Highway, mm -hmm. right outside our project. So it's very easy to get around without a car. Well, the most important thing is most people don't even know you're there. That's, that's it. So it's Nobody, a quiet community from folks that live there. You know, my art, um, Gary's, Gary's um, uh, right-hand man, Don Kalaki. Yeah, I know very well. So... When I got into the business full time in '88, uh, one of the first houses I built was Don's house. Literally, I can throw a rock at Don's house from my office. <laughs> He's on the street just west of us. We built 12 houses in the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, should have been in '88, but the market had died, and it took a long time to build 12 houses. But Don said he was apprehensive about uh, living next to an apartment complex. And he's been there for 33 years and he's never had a problem. Yeah. And the only problem was he gave us one because he set his house on fire once <laughs> with his barbecue. So you, you, can, you can tell him that. I will. Um, so let's get back to the nuts and bolts here. What's, the, what's your schedule on this? My schedule, um, basically, I need to get uh, site plan approval and I need to get file my covenants with the health department and get the formal approval. And then I'm going to put in building plans and I'm going to do this as soon as possible. And um, there's currently no one living in that, in that building right now. It's your office. Correct. No one's center. living there. Correct. So during that period of time, community center will be obviously off limits, right? Correct. Construction zone will be uh, fenced off, I'm sure. Sure. Will it impede any of the traffic coming through there? Because you only have that one no. avenue, and I'm concerned about emergency vehicles coming through. You know, out, we go there quite often with the ambulance. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. You, you know, our project, the road is one way, but it's it's more than wide enough for two ways. Yeah, as everybody goes two ways. <laughs> so um, we don't anticipate closing off the road anyway. I mean, you know, and if we had to come out a couple of feet onto the roadway, well, like all I'd have to do is uh, block off a couple of parking spaces because we've got a whole bank of 15 spaces right across the street, right across from it. So instead of going straight and by past the building, you could make a little semicircle and go around it. As long as we have a shame so we get emergency vehicles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's good. Um, anybody else have any questions? I mean, as far as the, the construction is concerned, the building is going to match to the buildings. Absolutely. This is pretty much right smack dab in the middle of the complex. You can't see it at all. You can't see it unless you drive up to it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's relatively straightforward. Anybody else have any other questions? And, you know, we know you've been a good neighbor. There's Thank no you. About that. I appreciate it. Um, and things are quiet in there. That's good. Things are things are things are very quiet. Until they set the place on fire. You have a few a few people. You have a few people. That was actually a squirrel. They found it. They found it. I had one tenant who thought it might have been. I thought it might have been her because she smoked. Yeah. 
but and she was nervous, but it actually turned out to be a squirrel gnawing on the wires for a decade or more above the above the utility room. The utility room, I remember. <laughs> the, inve- the insurance investigator was very displeased by that because he wanted to be able to blame somebody so his company didn't have to pay. Did he ever catch a squirrel? <laughs> no, he didn't catch the squirrel. No, he didn't look good. <laughs> he was he was sad that day. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? I was there too. Anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Is there anyone you can have a seat, Mr. Munchnick? Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak for to see the application? Is there anyone online? I have a letter for the record I'd like to read. Uh, dated October 22nd, so addressed to myself. The Village of Patchwork Community Development Agency submits this letter in support of a permit application submitted by Metro Group owners of Northwood Village to add seven additional apartments to its property. The Patchwork Community Development Agency has agreed to collaborate with uh, Metro Group on the project by providing Section 8 subsidies when the seven new units to be built. Um, the units are specifically for seniors and disabled households. Patrick CDA is well aware of the need for subsidized senior housing as the office receives calls weekly from seniors seeking affordable housing. Improving this project would be a benefit to the community and it's signed uh, sincerely Donald Watch. Sorry, I don't know Donald. Uh, so that is uh, in the record, and uh, there being no one in the audience or online that uh, wishes to speak for against the application, I will entertain a motion if the board feels so moved. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve the application subject to the following conditions. It's pending Suffolk County Health Department approval for the new proposed eye and septic system. Uh, that the board permits the uh, land banking of the necessary 11 additional parking spaces as per the submitted plans, and that the applicant shall provide access at all times for emergency vehicles uh, into and throughout the site. Motion by, Mr. Motion by Mr. Weeks. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Logan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One against, so uh, no one against. Congratulations. Motion is passed. Okay, what what application do you got us on? I'm sorry, you? So, DT Patrick LLC, Dirty Taco, 32 West Main Street, seeks permission to open a new restaurant with the addition of garage door. Subject also seeks the architectural review board approval for exterior changes in signage. So, the current is located in DT Business Song. Come on up and uh, give us the cards, please, from the mailing. Okay, and um, state your name and address for the record if you go on the school down the record. Oh, you uh, Tom Cataldo, Anne Marie Cataldo. Owners of Dirty Taco and Tequila. Okay, and your address, 32? 32 West Main. Okay. Uh, I have a question for the wooden Dirty Taco. <laughs> uh, dirty Taco is basically LA style street tacos, uh, appetizer salads, and tequila. All right, so go ahead, tell us about it. Sorry? Tell us about your application. Tell us about oh, um, okay. You yeah, we just um, basically thank you for seeing us. Um, we purchased the four business that was at 32 West Main. Uh, it was called Indigo. Uh, we purchased the business and uh, just about, I think it was in July. And we're looking to do, obviously, well, the interior work is a lot of just decor and decorations. Really, no, there's no structural work inside whatsoever. It was a fairly new renovation, I think the last two or three years. It was really very little of anything for us to actually have to do. 
Um, all we need to do in the front of the building, all of our, this is the fourth dirty taco we have. Um, all the dirty tacos, one of the concepts is an open air type of concept. So um, the way the front the facade that building lays out, it was only really good to use one eight foot uh, garage door. Uh, the other locations we have have several, so it opens up completely. This location that works best with just the one large door. And it was just also permitting there to use for our standard dirty taco sign, which is just with the, um, the black hook lights that hang over it. And it's a very simple um, fiberglass plexi letters on the facade of the building itself. So no real modification. You have it in this restaurant. I'm sure most folks have had it. It is. It's been redone so fairly times. recently. It's in right. pretty good shape. So just basically changing the decor, colors, things like that. So the only real modification in terms of any structure is this open garage door, as shown on the plan here, and that's a glass. Completely glass. I mean, obviously not completely. It's a glass open yeah. garage door to be yes. used and open during obviously agreeable weather conditions. That's correct. Yeah. Which is very. So there's a lot of restaurants with those that already utilize this, so we're familiar with this. Uh, it makes perfect sense, and the folks do seem to like it. It's like meatball, the meatball place. Right. right. And, 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 like and like rum. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's the same type of garage door. So exactly. it would be right to the left of the front door. That's right. on the right is that bar going out. You need to keep that all that. Yeah, the double doors will stay the same. Um, and just put the garage door in the middle. It'll basically be dead center in the dining room itself. We go up, it'll, it'll be a long straight run. So we'll open it up in nice better weather. Okay. Absolutely. Are you using the patio space in the alley as well? We'd like to use that for yeah, next season. Absolutely, yes. I don't know who that belongs to. I mean, because I it's a know. weird spot. I don't know if it's the village or if it's. That's Joel's. Joel's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the weird spot. So it's right away to Joel's. It's a it's it's a very unusual spot. Yeah. Yeah. It was utilized in the past by the hot crowd and everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, so check that, that out. That yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me, tell me <laughs> about your operation. Because we're not going to allow it to be created here. It's another situation where uh, at nighttime this turns into a club, and music. You're coming to us to open a restaurant, correct? That's right. Yes. Um, so tell us about your hours of operation, uh, et cetera. And tell us about your current existing. Okay. We have a uh, Dirty Taco is owned by my son, my wife, and myself. So it's a family business. Um, we've been in business for. I'm 56. We've been in business for probably 25, 30 years in the hospitality business from, I'm actually a block kosher caterer is my profession, my trade. Uh, so we've been in the hospitality luxury catering business for many, many years. Um, this concept was, was this concept that my son and my wife and I worked on for many years um, from LA back to New York. It's, it's a hip, affordable atmosphere. It's a family restaurant. It's our fourth location. Um, we have a great relationship in every town that we've been in so far. Woodbury is our latest. We're in a shopping center. Um, it, it's been incredible for us. We have a stellar clean liquor license. We generally open for lunch four days a week. We open up the other two days. We close every Monday. We close all day. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, we open up for, at 4 p.m. The kitchen closes by about 10, 30, 11. We're usually out the door by midnight. Um, none of our locations have any type of dancing. There is absolutely no DJ. Uh, we have a great sound system. But again, if you come to any of the Dirty Tacos, you'll see yourself that on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon, it's baby carriages, sassy seats, and high chairs all afternoon long. There is a line at every location to get in. There's an average of an hour and a half to two hour wait to even get a table at any of our locations on any given night. Um, every town that we're in, give an example of of uh, Rockville Center, we took what they call the curse corner. It was about 11 restaurants in about 15 years. And even my family said, are you out of your mind? No one takes that location. We love the location. Since we took that spot and the lines have been there every single night, we have, there are now three new restaurants on the same block. There's a new hair salon, there's office space that's been rented. We are a major draw for most locations that we go to. Um, Woodbury, we're in a Woodbury Common Shopping Center, a very high-end shopping center. The local stores around us have all seen an increase about 10 to 15% in 
in their business every weekend because the waits are so long that the guests start shopping in the, in, in the actual shopping center. They actually call us the anchor store. They, they call us an anchor. an anchor. We're an anchor. <laughs> and there's something said that's an absolute gorgeous shopping center. They call us the anchor. In our one tour location, it was a local spot on Merrick Road. Um, it was uh, six or eight different places in a 15-year period. And again, the same situation. The neighbors come to us. They hate the fact, you know, in, in Montour, that there is, we have 16 parking spots. I only have 47 seats. But again, as they wait online to get in, they park all over the town. Luckily, those side streets were available to park. Even the neighbors themselves say to us, it's a blessing that you're actually here with us in our town. So it's been a great, great situation for us. And give you a little background. We found out about what the former building that we bought was about after we purchased it. We didn't know what that Indigo was about. We just thought it was a great location for us, an ideal spot for us to open up in a Suffolk County branch. We found out what it was all about afterwards. Even the Liquor Authority approved our license simply because it was a dirty taco and our reputation has been stellar with the Liquor Authority as well. So we're in great standing with every community that we're in. And again, we are not a nightclub. We have no intentions of that whatsoever. Did you purchase the building or did you purchase? No, we didn't. We purchased the business. You purchased the business. What role is Mr. Macedo going to play in your business? Zero. He is okay, nothing to do with us. He's listed as a partner in the application. Yeah. That can turn to agree. Yeah. I, I will give you anything you need to see. What happened with that, he, again, a little bit of the wool pulled over our eyes for this guy to begin with here. What happened was when we came on board, he was like, you know what? I, he's a construction company. So part of my deal when I purchased the restaurant from him, he says to me, um, he's very, he's supposedly was supposedly a good neighbor in the town. I found that he was, <laughs> but you know, he was in the town and he has a construction company, which is a very large construction company. Um, that's his real line of business point of stand. He said he will take care of all my construction for me. Part of my deal was he'll construct the front doors. He already purchased the forest and everything else. He filled out the initial paperwork initially. And then obviously after that, my wife and I came in like, we have nothing to do with you. We don't want you all this at all. And that's how it happened. So, so he's no, he, not is, in, okay. he is not in any way, shape or form. We do have reservations from, you know, somebody in your same spot came in mm -hmm. and said, we're doing a high-end restaurant. And for full disclosure, I work for the county legislature. Mm -hmm. And Indigo was one of my biggest problems every Monday. I'm getting mm -hmm. false complaints. Yep. And, and, and because of, it turned into like, not only was it a nightclub, it was out of control. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand. So, so yeah. my concern no, is on the paper. If you're going to close at 11, you're closing at mm -hmm. 11. It lists yeah. him as a partner, and I need you to say on the record that he's not a partner. Yeah. I'm not like any of the operations going. Okay. 100%. Okay. And I will get you all of the paperwork that you need to see that he is in no way, shape, or form a partner. Well, we, have on, we have on record. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. fine. And, you know, based on your other locations, i just looking at them and they Googling, you don't have issues. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so we, have a total, we have a total understanding here yeah. of what it is you're doing and what it is you're not doing. So with that, any other questions for the applicant before I turn it over to the ARB? Did you say hours of operation? So I love your hours of operation. Right now, our operation, our hours of operation are uh, lunch, 11.30 until 10.30, 11, the kitchen closes, the weekends. So the kitchen goes by about midnight. And we usually have the weekends by about one. We're usually out during the week by about 11, 30, 12. Which and we, is, we intend to run generally the same hours here as well. Now look, I mean, we, we, we realize that the, the village of Patchwork is, you know, obviously it's a labor town. Uh, we'd love to be open with, you know, tacos and whatnot, but we, we are not too attend. We don't move our tables out. Nothing like that at all. We have our kitchens open, the bars open, otherwise we shut. We don't shut the kitchen, keep a bar open. It's one operation all the time. And do you have any trucks or anything like that that you have? Like, you don't have like food trucks or anything that you operate? We don't have any food trucks. Okay, at so present. you'll be storing them in the. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. no. Yeah. If parking is at a premium. Yeah. Right, so. And then you dumpster usually based on what the previous <clears throat> dumpster use was, I assume. Um, one big concern back in that turnaround behind there is the fact that delivery trucks get in there and stay there and people can't get around and get their cars out. Mm -hmm. And an SUV sensitive to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. At all locations now, um, we have almost all of our deliveries come between 8 and 12 noon is when most deliveries come in. Again, it's a new spot for us here. We hope that they'll agree to the same situation we have now and, and come early. That's great. What, what are your anticipated staffing and the numbers for this for the site? Um, staffing for this location, it, we employ right now well over 100 and so on employees um, between the three locations right now. 
We expect this location probably to employ about 50 employees at this location. Did you say you have your SLA, uh, your license already for this particular no, site? No, 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 it's pending um, still? no. No, it's pending, but we already spoke to him. And because of the situation we found out with the previous owner, the previous spot there, there were so many issues that we had right. to make sure we were clear and make sure that they knew it was a dirty taco coming in and they had the same reservations. He was, the previous owner was not involved at all in our business. We had to make sure that was all done as well, just to make sure that we were clear to make sure we could apply for our license and get the license for that location as well. Okay. No clearing of the dining room tables at night? Absolutely not, no. We've never cleared a table in four years at any, any of our restaurants. Just because under the village code, there's a definition of nightclub and that's one of the factors that's considered. To give price to that. Yeah, absolutely. So what your other locations, what role does music play? Is it sort of background music? Do you have any like a live acoustic trio or something like that? Or? Um we do with the at the rock at the Rockville Center location, a couple of times a season, we'll put in a duo trio that play more Latin Caribbean style music. Uh, there's no we've never ever done a band, we've no intention of ever doing any kind of live bands. Usually it's just um it, it's acoustic, that's basically it. It's a Spanish. Guitar player was one of the ones we use also. We stick very much to the, you know, Dirty Taco is is in is a fusion concept. And and why it's been so successful, why people have come from all over. And my goodness, if I can tell you, if you saw our, our, our website, it, it blows up with like, you know, how excited people are from Suffolk County to have a locale out here at this point. The idea of Dirty Taco is, is an Asian fusion Mexican concept. Mm -hmm. So we've actually, you know, why it's an LA concept is because in LA, there's been a great fusion of Mexican and, and Korean. So the Korean taco, the Korean food trucks and whatnot, back in the early 80s, were really born in that particular spot in LA. And that's what really kicked us off. So when you look at our menu, when you see our menu, you will not see the typical Mexican crispy taco shell. It, they're all soft shells and they will range from Vietnamese shrimp to a Korean short rib and, and birria tacos. And they're very, very unique and they're very different and they're very affordable. And, and that's kind of that's the trick. That's why it's been so successful for us. And the atmosphere is alive. It's an electric atmosphere. It's very exciting. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. And that's kind of where it ends. To answer your question with the music, the music is a Soros music system. It's got a great sound to it, but it's 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 background music. It, it's really just background. So its role is to complement the dining experience so and not to be the source of entertainment, the main source okay. of entertainment. And actually, again, Paul, you know, we run Dirty Taco, although it's a mom and pop business, and we run very family oriented. It's always a family member in every location. We touch every table. We also, on the flip side, run it almost as a, as, as a franchise to some degree because the food consistency has to be identical. The drink has to be identical. And when the decor is the same in every location as well, even the music format, there is a, a loop of music. We get sick of it. We know every beat that plays that song. But you know what? It's the same format. Every location you go to, you'll hear the same looping of the reel of music. So we don't change it because it became 11 o'clock and now it's got to be this music. That same real place from morning until night. Okay. And you said that the, by design, the atmosphere is lively and very lively. So very it's, exciting. It's this one thing I have heard about this this location, oh. experience myself, it can be allowed in the indoor space. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us do the ceiling height and the uh, it, it, it did mm -hmm. last times I've been there. Right. Uh, it's so so I guess it lends itself to what you guys are. Absolutely. Wow. I have a question. Sure. How do you go from a gourmet <laughs> kosher uh, um, to a shrimp taco? <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm in Woodbury, and my biggest and my original location that my wife and I became Clark Kosher Caterers 23 years ago was actually in Woodbury Jewish Center, was my first location of being an actual kosher caterer. That location seats 800 guests. It's extremely, extremely high end Clark Kosher Catering. So, that area, every time we leave for 23 years, we look, look something quick to get a bite to eat in that area. There was never anything at all. So when we found that spot in Woodbury, that's what we chose. The ironic thing is, my religious Jews that live in that area, you'll be amazed. It's what goes on during tacos, stays during tacos. When they come in and there's no kosher food yet, they're eating a taco. I don't even, I don't even see them there. I just, go, I, just go, I just keep going on. So that's like, well, that'll be it. But that's how it happened. But the concept really started, though, honestly, with my son, who went to school in Arizona, and every weekend partied in LA, ended up moving to LA for a short time. And, he really developed this whole concept, brought it to my wife and I, and kind of badgered us for about three years on this concept that he has that was going to be so huge and successful. And we finally gave it a shot. And we actually went to LA with him. So show us what this is all about. Let's see what this is about. He's a finance major. He knows his numbers. He knows how to make it work. And he came back with a little business proposal that we thought was 
absolutely fantastic. We loved what we saw. And we said, let's try. We'll give you one little spot in Lantau, small 42 seat. We'll start you there. We'll see how it goes. And in four years, been a unit opening every year in the last four years. Mm-hmm. What are you very exciting? Oh, uh, we're mass people. Mass people. Although I don't like the rides, so I may pick up an apartment here. We're <laughs> <laughs> building new ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions for the applicant? I just want to say you had me at Kareem shortly. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against the application? Call you, Mark. Looking forward to <laughs> yeah. no, one one no one online. Is there anyone online? There's no one online. Okay. Uh, okay, in that case, I will entertain your motion. Mr. Biggs, can you make oh, a motion? Absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to uh, propose that we accept the uh, application as uh, proposed with uh, any uh, health department regulations uh, taken care of. State liquor authority pending approval. Liquor authority, obviously. Yeah. Motion I'll, I'll, I'll second. Okay, question on the motion, Mr. Chairman. Did we uh, well, we'll segue into AR? Well, we'll do them separately. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll get information open, but they have to have to satisfy these guys. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the motion was made saying all those in favor. Aye. Right. Any opposed? It's okay. So you got that far. Now we turn you over to Ms. Zorzan on and talk about the uh, exterior of the building. So welcome to Kata. Thank Thank you. You. We spoke with Jerry and Jade Signs early this evening, so he went on the signage. So our understanding, you're putting your logo on the front of the building, and that's just for one sign. Yes. You're going to be painting that top part of the building white. Correct. And you get an ad for, look to me like in the rendering, four black boosters. So you don't want any signage in the back or on the door at this time. It's just the one sign. To be honest with you, unfortunately, we didn't put that in there initially. I didn't know there was a sign in the back of the building when I initially mm-hmm. had them send it to us. So we would like a sign, whatever sign is in the back of the building. Since it's only in the back, we would just keep that and just put a regular, another sign in that light box. That would just be the joint taco. If you can me. um send a rendering of that to Carol, so forward it to us. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we can put that in the application pending our approval of what you show us. So Sorry, if it's replacing you. what is there size wise, mm-hmm. I'm sure there won't be a problem. Great. But we will need to see it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that's it. So I would make a recommendation to approve this based on what was discussed. So move then. I'll second it. Okay, uh, on the ARBP, so all those in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Welcome to Patrick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Good luck. Carter will be your first customer. I'll be there. We got him waiting for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, folks. Okay. In the interest of time. Uh, 541, Mr. Mark and Kimberly. Foss, 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 or Fauci, if you speak to me. That would be, yeah. Let's yeah, like look at the Foss, because, you know, all Fauci is not all, not all yet. So anyway, to finish up the uh, announcement, 541 South Ocean Area Seas Commission to replace existing deck area uh, with 15, Foot five inch by 25 foot 10 inch enclosed porch sunroom subject premises and located in the RPO zone. So state in an address for the record. Mark Fossey, 541 South Ocean Avenue. Okay, sir. Um, you have a flag lot, right? Uh, I don't have to the flag lot. No, I have 120 feet. It's not a flag lot. It's a, it looks, it's a, looks like a flag lot. On, uh, it's on it's actually side. got an extra lot on the sides. Yeah. It's a big lot. Oh, it's, two, it's, it's actually two lots, two dot count numbers? It's actually not subdivided. It's, oh. it's a one acre lot, but I think, and that's why I bought it, I think at some point someone was planning on putting another one of those small lots in mm-hmm. that side area there. But uh, I mean, at some point. Isn't there a house on South Ocean Avenue? 
the house you want to do this on is the one behind it? No, no, it, it runs it. South Ocean Avenue, <coughs> it's about 200 feet. So the house is basically oh. in the middle. The other house on the corner, John, is a different house. Oh, that's a different yeah. house. Uh, unless you know it's there, you don't know it's there. Yeah, because yeah. I looked at it on Google. I was thinking, it's not correct. No. So it was a big lot, so we took advantage of it. We basically put the house like right in the middle. So we have like an equal amount of property in front of that. You're actually close to the Leo Street when you're out of South Oak Um, Probably, yeah. Yeah, in fact, I'm probably closer to uh, Smith Street. Also. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you want to add a sun porch. Correct. Is it is an existing deck? And the existing deck is so I'm going to uh, replace that with a, a sun porch. Yeah. So, and you're going to put a, uh, obviously, a, a porch on top of the sun desk. Yeah, the, um, I don't know if that's really going to be functional. Uh, the reason why I have a flat roof there is yeah. that the south facing glass of the house is it's a solar passive house. Right. So you really can't put much of a pitch there. So it's basically a very slight pitch, essentially a flat roof. And this is already a female height, right? You already have this. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we, we built, uh, did you float out? Did you have a house back then? No, interesting enough, we, uh, we bought. A lot, and then Hurricane Gloria came through, yeah. and we realized, you know, Hurricane it's going to happen again. Yeah. And so we built a lot up in order to accommodate the septic design. We have the five ring system, and then we do the map. And then it was five feet, so we said, okay, let's just do a full story, and, and we put a garage under the house. Mm -hmm. So we were at one point the only house raised, and then all our neighbors, you know, grew after uh, that awful Hurricane Sandy, which was. As you know, from the disaster damage. And all your utilities are on the first, are they still on the first floor? Or are they, raised to uh, they are on, um, like the, the gas system is uh, almost first floor, so everything has been built up to the ceiling. So it's above the flood zone, um, but it's not on the first floor. So, so as opposed to many others that we have approved, this is not a prefabricated sunroom, it's actually constructed. No, that, that is correct. Yeah, the, the home, the home is a uh, post and beam home, mm -hmm. so large timbers, and so we're going to do the same uh, construction technique. It looks like it matches the, the existing building. You know, obviously, I'm assuming it's to be heated and cooled like the rest of the house. It's not separated off from it's, the house. It's it's not going to be heated and cooled. It's not going to be heated and cooled. Okay, okay. so it's a sunroom. Just the old fashioned sense. So you're expanding the foundation to accommodate the sunroom. Right. Of how we yeah, put, put, put posts in, but um, I thought I'd put a, you know, a standard foundation under it. Mm -hmm. There's some like this. So yeah. So we're going to be back on the second floor. So. And I got a lecture storage space down there, so. Yeah. As you pointed out, the, the, the apparent deck with the railings around it is, is not necessarily for functional purposes. It's the railing is more aesthetic. It's just a roof. It's not meant to be a deck. Those are going to be uh, six foot sliding glass doors when we ran around. So something had to be put there so people didn't like accidentally launch themselves out the door when they're open. So um, I could have just put like a single piece to, you know, a handrail. I thought it was something. It's nice. And the level above, that's just, that, that rail is just, that's going to be a roof. That's not going to be. It's going to be a flat roof. Um, okay. And, um, you know, there's this skylights there. I thought it would make a good place to put some solar panels at some point. Because my, my system is worthless when it comes to solar panels because mm -hmm. the, the pitch and it's pointing the wrong way. You must have some great views from there, huh? Uh, not bad. I actually have my neighbor's garage right there. Um, so one of the disadvantages of putting the house there was that, uh, you know, a lot of the views are blocked. But got some views from the deck. Um, some from the upper floor. It's not fantastic though. A lot of trees and stuff. And the one view I did have that the village planted some trees, you know, so mm -hmm. you're buying a park. What are you going to do? Yeah, mm -hmm. So the only increase in the footprint is going to be where the sunroom goes, correct? Correct. 400 square feet approximately. There's no zoning issues with this car. Sixteen foot property. All setbacks are all good. Any other questions for the applicant? The siding is going to obviously match the existing. Yeah, see the cloud board. Any construction board building 
building department. Yes, you're going to make me uh, stamp the plan and all that stuff. It's a nice addition to the home. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, there being no one in the audience, so I'm assuming there's no one online either, that uh, we can uh, so desire to move forward with the motion on this application. Chairman, I will we uh, approve this application as it's been submitted to us. Motion approved. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Ms. Kelly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. You're welcome to the I'll take that. Sounds nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank was an application for 47 Brightwood Street to raise and renovate existing dwelling located in the A residential zone. Since the applicant is not present, I'll entertain a motion from the board to adjourn the application to a future date. So moved. Okay. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. There being no other business uh, on the agenda, but to be brought before the uh, planning board this evening, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, well. ARB is not done. Yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. It's not on my schedule this, so I apologize. These are uh, five applications that came to the work session. So I'll try to make it quick. Um, they're just ARB applications. So the first one is Project Safety Net New York Incorporated. They're at 180 West Main Street, Patch Up. This is where the old uh, the Rock Church was. Go ahead, sure. yeah. Okay, so um, they're proposing one sign on the front of the building, and we'd like to have that approved as presented. Okay, we'll do them all at once. Mm -hmm. The next one is, and that was done by Jay Sign. So we spoke to Jerry already. They're all his projects. <laughs> Andre Lopez. And this one is actually Jordan Cafe, who was here last uh, two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, true. Yep. We didn't have the signage at that time. Um, so they're proposing a sign on the front of the building and a uh, awning on just the front of the building, not on the side where it currently has it wrapped around. They don't only have it on the front of the building facing Main Street. So we'd like to approve that as presented. Okay. Next one is well, this one you guys are gonna like. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be in the steakhouse where Flo's was. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> it's gonna be called um chops. So they're proposing That's original. Um, five shot. signs. We spoke to Jerry. Um, we'd like to accept um, yep. present that as a You guys are good with it, right? Yeah. We're good with it. We went over that one pretty thoroughly with the applicant and Jerry. Can you bust their shots? <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Quench Wines, which is in actually Jerry's building. Um, they're just replacing the sign that was there, with something a little updated. It's very nice. So they're going to have a, a new sign on the front of the building. They're also going to have um, uh, the, uh, the hanging sign that took out. So also that would be the next one. That's Quench Line on uh, 90 West Main Street. And lastly, oh, I know. That's how I can turn the uh, We're about the liquor store. <laughs> this one is on uh, 110 North that. Ocean Avenue. And it's put down Sepa. 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 Oh, so, um, yeah. so they want um, one freestanding sign on Ocean Avenue, um, and it's double sided. And we could, uh, would suggest approving that as. Is that so, Dr. Tyson's old building? Say again. So, Dr. Tyson's old building? Um, 110? I don't know. If that was, I, no, I don't think that was. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's the other side. So these absorbs are all of these are without conditions. You, you, you want to make a cumulative motion to approve all those as presented, no conditions. I'll second it then. 
Uh, motion made by Ms. Rosemont, second by Mr. Weeks. All those in favor of accepting the recommendations of the actual uh, review uh, committee, so, so, so say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Say nay. There are no nays. So I. This is uh, plenty board. Is now over? Uh, a schedule yeah. question. What is our schedule for November? Do we have a. I'm going to make a comment. Look. We have a meeting. On November. I think it's the last person. 23rd, I believe. Tuesday. Monday? Tuesday. 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 Oh, that's Tuesday. 23rd. Oh, yeah. So that's that one, one meeting for November, the regular scheduled meeting at this point. At this point, yeah. I haven't, I don't think I have time to put anybody else in, you know, a different meeting. Okay. Is there a workshop, so I think it's is there a workshop be, also, I think? It's going to have to be. And if there is, can we make it 6 30 instead of 6? We can try. That's the 23rd. Yeah. Are we caught up on the back? Wait, I know you have a ton of applications. Um, I have about five or six applications, and I know two more coming in. I mean, but if I can, I'm not opposed to staying here a little longer, but right. I don't know how it really feels. Like if you just want to bang out. If I can bang them out, you know, we have a lot. Well, of the garage, you know. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just get yeah. it done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Can we? Uh, sure. Can we? Can we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Second, Ms. Kelly.